Hi and welcome to Chandu.org. In this video, we are going to take a look at customer satisfaction scorecard generated from half a million customer complaints uh, made in, in the data set that we have been studying in the previous week. So just a quick reminder, this is part of a three-part case study where I have downloaded half a million customer complaint data from US government's open data website. And uh, we are trying to analyze this data. So this is what I call as a blank canvas case study where all we have is raw data and uh, we have to define the analytical objective, uh, the goals and start analyzing the data. In the very first part, we analyzed what kind of complaints are being made using an interactive tree map. In the second part of the report uh, or in the second part of the case study, we analyzed regional trends and uh, regional analysis by looking at uh, various types of reports. We looked at a dashboard style report as well as we looked at some 3D maps or power maps uh, to analyze regional trends by state and zip code. In the concluding part, I'm going to show you how you can synthesize all this data to generate a customer satisfaction scorecard uh, along the themes of my bank versus your bank. Okay, your bank versus my bank, whatever you want to call it. And uh, first, let me do a very, very quick demonstration of the scorecard. Then I will briefly explain the methodology behind this. Uh, and then I'll tell you how you can obtain the full workbook and other explanation about this particular data. Now, at any point, you're welcome to visit chendu.org where you can access the full workbook and a detailed explanation of this particular case study. So what we have here is a bank versus bank, although some of these are not banks, they are, uh, for example, Equifax and uh, Experian, these are credit rating companies also mentioned in this list because they are financial institutions. Okay, so we have uh, the companies here. In the original data, we have close to 4,000 companies, but uh, doing a comparative study between any two of the 4,000 can be very, very cumbersome. So what I've done is I have taken out almost all of them except the top 15 companies uh, based on the complaint volume in 2015 and uh, presented only that. This way we could actually weed out a lot of companies that have only a few complaints like three complaints or five complaints and just focus on the bigger institutions where there is a lot of volume so that we could do some uh, really juicy powerful analysis. Okay, so what we have is a, a overall summary of the score higher score is better. So Citibank here is having 5.6 compared to Bank of America 4.9. Uh, uh, the score is out of 10. So uh, you can see that uh, this one is better and their relative ranking within the top 15. So you can see Citibank ranks at 7 whereas Bank of America ranks at 12. Okay, uh, and then uh, we have a breakup by the factors. What are the factors that determine this score? Uh, we have a lot of data, but we are using five factors to determine the score because we are talking about customer satisfaction here. Uh, so what I have done is, since we don't have access to additional data, for example, we don't know how many customers Citibank had uh, versus how many customers Bank of America has. So we can't really compare the complaint numbers alone uh, because let's say Bank of America has 5 million customers versus Citibank has 1 million customers. Naturally, Bank of America will have, uh, you know, the expectation is at least five times as many complaints because they have five times as many customers. So we can't compare these numbers to that numbers without knowing the actual comp customer data or the transaction volume or additional things like uh, whether Citibank or Bank of America has rolled out a new customer satisfaction system which uh, probably impacted the score. So we don't know any of that. We just have complaint data. So based on that, we have to generate the sc satisfaction score. So the factors that I have considered are five. The first one is called as nasty issues. Um, I will briefly explain them in a, in a minute. The second one is frustration score. The third one is growing complaints. The fourth one is negative resolutions. And the fifth one is disputed resolutions. Now let's talk about each of them. Uh, the nasty issues is nothing but when, when a customer is complaining 
about the company on this open data website they have a choice of specifying what kind of issue they are facing and there are a, a set of 95 different issues from which you can select one of them so out of all these 95 we could say a handful of them are really nasty okay a good example is uh, incorrect information on your credit report now this is something that is not a trivial issue this is a really a disturbing issue for you especially if you are applying for a new mortgage or loan uh, incorrect information on your credit report can negatively impact your life right so as a customer you will be pissed off if you discover that your bank has incorrect information on the credit report so from that perspective we could say out of all the 95 different issues that can be raised uh, this subset of 7 or 12 or 25 are really nasty okay now that list is configurable so for the purpose of this core card i have selected a handful of them but you are welcome to download the file and change the list and see how the scores will be impacted based on your new list okay so we we specify a set of nasty issues and we calculate as a percentage of all the complaints received by that bank how much is the nasty issue okay the higher the percentage the lesser your overall customer satisfaction score will be likewise the next issue next factor is frustration now whenever you make a complaint as a customer you have a choice of doing some free text narrative you can type anything you want now from that narrative we could do a little bit of text analysis to figure out what percentage of narratives are frustrated or sad essentially we are looking for negative words here and we are doing simple word frequency analysis to figure out how many um, complaints with the narrative have uh, the frustrated tone okay so we said define a list of words called as negative words or filter words and then we figure out by word count how many narratives have that uh, negative words uh, and calculate the percentage again the higher percentage means more people are pissed off with with the service or uh, they are more um, you know explanative and negative in the complaint narrative this doesn't really tell anything but it tells you how the customer feels which directly impacts your customer satisfaction then the growing complaints this is a bit dicey but i choose to have this factor in on there because uh, we don't know anything else so we have to go with some numbers here to figure out the score so the idea is like this we, we are looking only the data from 2013 to 15 so we have three years of data and within these three years i wanted to figure out if, if a company is experiencing growth in complaints or decline in complaints for example you could look at the yearly trends between Citibank and Bank of America here and you can see that Citibank has uh, a nearly flat flat trend but if you actually drill down and look at the numbers you would see that Citibank actually has a positive growth that means every year they are having more complaints whereas on the other hand Bank of America has a negative growth uh, which means they are getting lesser complaints per year from 2013 to 15 so this means in the absence of any other data we don't know anything else uh, we could say this means their customer satisfaction is improving now this is a bit dicey here because uh, it could also be that bank of america is losing customers and hence they have fewer customers to make complaints and hence they have fewer complaints or uh, you know there are few other things that can go on like bank of america implemented some sort of a fancy pants system where uh, making a complaint will now take 75 working days and so customers choose to not complain because they're frustrated with the new system and that could be the reason why their complaint rate is going down you know there any number of reasons like that but since we don't know any of those things we are just looking at this data uh, purely from what we know perspective i thought uh, growing complaints is a good perspective to add, to add here the fourth factor is the negative resolutions again this is when a company makes a customer uh, looks at a complaint from from the customer they offer a resolution and that resolution is also recorded in the open data website now looking at those resolutions we can say out of all the possible resolutions offered by the company there, there are about six or seven different types there we could say some of these are negative because they don't improve the customer satisfaction for example any resolution that goes like uh, resolved with monetary relief we could say the customer would end up being a little more satisfied because she received some monetary com compensation for her trouble whereas on the other hand uh, a, a resolution like 
closed without explanation uh, could could negatively impact the customer satisfaction because the customer doesn't really know what happened and why the complaint is closed okay so that could be one of the reasons uh, and uh, we calculate as a percentage of all the resolutions how many are what we consider as negative again this list is customizable in the settings page so you could go and change that there the final one is disputed resolutions again uh, when 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 the bank offers a resolution customer has a choice to dispute it and go with further process like maybe a uh, a lawsuit against the company or opening up a new complaint or what not we don't know so but as a percentage of all the resolutions we could calculate how many are disputed and we could right away say that any time a customer disputes what the bank says that could cause for a drop in customer satisfaction so uh, higher dispute rates would mean lower customer satisfaction so we calculate all these factors and we assign them weightages right now everything has 20 percent weightage so each factor is weighed equally but again you can set up the weightages differently uh, such that they they all total up to 100 percent and uh, the the scorecard will automatically calculate so based on these we calculate the overall score using some simple logic uh, and arithmetic and present that information on the top uh, the left side is for Citibank the right side is for Bank of America and then we also have some simple summary of the complaint trend how much is the 2015 volume what kind of three-year trend we experienced what is the 12 month trend look like and so that you have a sense of at the raw number absolute number level how these two banks compare with each other we also know we also have a, a state level heat map uh, I initially wanted to embed a, a map of US here but because the US map is irregularly shaped uh, in fact every other country's map is irregularly shaped uh, embedding that kind of thing here would would be very tricky especially my choice would be to exclude Alaska and and a few other states but that's not fun uh, and um, so we had to come up with some other visualization I thought a 50 state uh, simple grid like mapping is better and uh, so we have 10 states per row 5 states and just alphabetically arranged and you could look and you could immediately see some sort of uh, subtleties for example you could see that uh, California and Florida continue to be bigger states for Bank of America whereas on Citibank's front uh, California and New York seems to be uh, highlighted so you could see the number of complaints and again only for 2015 that data is presented we also have complaint mode summary this is uh, 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 how customers are complaining to you whether they're complaining by web postal mail referral fax or phone or email and uh, we have uh, as a percentage of total complaints how much each each mode is receiving along with their numerical summaries here so this information will give you an idea of what kind of customers we have are they web savvy or they postal mail and referral kind of savvy etc and that will kind of help you understand uh, how these complaints are coming okay so that's in a nutshell how the scorecard is set up let me very quickly demonstrate how this thing works you can change this for example you can choose us band corp versus uh, uh, Navy and I don't know what kind of company that is uh, which has very high customer satisfaction according to our survey uh, and um, and you can you can see that as soon as you make a selection all of these things will change your heat maps will change your um, your graphs and trend lines and everything changes so everything is beautifully tied together with formulas and pivot tables and and picture links and whatnot uh, let me very briefly showcase the the settings page where you can say whether a resolution is positive or not if it is true that means it's a positive resolution if it is false that is a negative resolution and it will contribute to your negative resolution rate likewise you can specify a list of issues that you consider to be critical or nasty you can go ahead and type anything there you can just delete the rows and add them uh, make sure you're not deleting adjacent cell rows or anything likewise you can adjust the weightages you can see everything is 20 percent but let's say growing complaints is only 10 percent and this one is 25 and that one is 25 now after you make changes and if you see the good to go message there that means the total is adding up to 100 you could go back to scorecard and you can see different scores right now with the new percentages Navient is no longer the number one company they rank number four uh, whereas probably some other company might be number one we don't know what that company is we have to select all of them to see this 
okay so this is a how you can um, uh, analyze one company versus another and get a very good idea of the about their customer satisfaction scores now the intention here is to show you the kind of thought process you need to go through uh, to come up with the factors and, and calculate them and present them. This is one of the many ways in which you can visualize the scorecards. Uh, I, I, I actually had a couple of false starts, but then eventually I arrived at this layout, which I feel is more uh, suitable for the data that we have here. Again, you can go ahead and come up with completely new and completely um, awesome layout for this kind of a scorecard so if you have some such idea go ahead and do that and share it with me uh, either on the youtube or on the blog or on facebook page before we wrap up i just want to tell you that these case studies are part of our um, our sequence to launch the 50 ways to analyze data program this is a, a, a course that i run uh, to teach people how to analyze data essentially we take raw data and we go through all these steps to arrive at beautiful displays whether they are visualizations they are uh, dashboards their reports or whatever uh, so that you could analyze business data and come up with valuable insights so in the 50 ways to analyze data course we go through many case studies like this we go through several real life scenarios mm -hmm. blank canvas case studies and analyze the data uh, understand the techniques uh, both statistical excel based and business data analysis based operations financial whatever uh, we go through all those techniques and you learn a whole gamut of advanced excel technology techniques and features uh, to help you create really awesome data analysis so this course is opening for enrollment in the on 24th of february that is tomorrow if you're watching it on 23rd of february but if you're watching this sometime in future there is a high chance that we will reopen this program again in 2016 and 2017 also so if all of this sounds interesting just look at the description of this video uh, where there is a link for the 50 ways to analyze data program check it out and uh, if you if you want to upskill your data science and data analysis uh, analyst skills consider joining for the program thank you so much for the full file and explanation about this particular uh, case study check out chendu.org where we have all the three parts of the case study thank you so much for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this video talk to you again soon bye bye